With us now to talk more about this, NBC News correspondent Blaine Alexander outside the Fulton County Courthouse in Atlanta, who was the first to report on this decision. Katie Fang, MSNBC legal contributor and host of the Katie Fang Show, Saturdays at noon on MSNBC. Tamar Hallerman, senior reporter for the Atlanta Con uh, Journal-Constitution, who's spent a lot of time covering this case, and Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney who is now a law professor at the University of Alabama and co-host of the Sisters in Law podcast. She is an MSNBC legal analyst. So, Blaine, you were the first one to break this and to give us the details of this decision. What are some of the main points in this 23-point ruling? Well, I think the judge's tone really stands out to me. You kind of laid out the crux of this ruling, which is that, yes, Bonnie Willis and her office can stay on the case, but Nathan Wade has to go. And so, but in saying that, it's really important to note that the judge doesn't hesitate to take Bonnie Willis to task. He points out that she made some decisions that one would call questionable along the way, and he really calls that out. I want to point you to one page that stood out to me. We're talking about page nine, uh, where basically he says, this finding is by no means an indication that the court condones this tremendous lapse in judgment or the unprofessional manner of the DA's testimony during the evidentiary hearing. Rather, it's the undersigned's opinion that Georgia law does not permit the finding of an actual conflict for simply making bad choices, even repeatedly. And so it's important that he points back to that uh, stunning two-hour testimony that all of us watched from Fonnie Willis, uh, where she got on the stage, called, uh, got on the stand, rather, called uh, the motion to dismiss her, said it was filled with lies. Uh, but the question now is, what's going to happen going forward? I've reached out to the DA's office a number of times to see if they're going to comment on this, what this looks like. But just in speaking with some people who have been following this case very closely, Jose, as one person told me, you know what, it almost seems like a very simple solution. This person looked at their watch and said, okay, it's 945. If I were in Fonnie Willis's seat, Nathan Wade would be gone by 1030, and then we could just move on and put this entire thing behind us. But I think it's important to point out, Jose, even though the legal part of this is kind of buttoned up with this ruling, there are are still ways that this has bled over. There's a state Senate committee that's looking into this, uh, you know, and has indicated that they plan to subpoena Fonnie Willis in the weeks to come. So even the shadow is going to be cast over this case still for some time to come. Jose. Joyce, what stood out to you most from the judge's decision today? Well, I think to the point Blaine was making, the real impact of this decision is um, a win for the DA's office. Fonnie Willis's office gets to continue with this case. Her entire office won't be recused. But in retrospect, I think we can see that Willis could have addressed this very easily early on. The judge is concerned less with her relationship with Wade and more with how she handled it. And particularly, he seems to have been left with a lingering belief that they weren't completely forthcoming when they testified. So had Willis filed a response with the court a couple of days after the defense filed its motion, acknowledged the relationship, said that there was nothing improper under Georgia law, I think this would have all ended right there. Instead, Donald Trump has certainly benefited from the delay in this case. Now Willis will have to separate with Wade, something she could have done on the first or second day following this situation coming to light. And it's a lot messier than it was. But in essence, she's told the judge she's ready to go to trial in 30 days, and this case should be back on track. I mean, tomorrow, this, this motion was made in January. The case essentially ground to a halt for those two and a half months. So where do things go from here? At this point, we're waiting to see if anyone plans to appeal this decision. Uh, the DA's office could do that, although we don't necessarily expect them to. And of course, the defendants who together uh, joined in on this motion could also seek to appeal this. President Trump's Atlanta team has been very vocal and active on this. Michael Roman, his team, Ashley Merchant, led this disqualification push, and we'll be watching closely to see if they appeal. Uh, D.A. Willis, of course, has a decision here to make. Of course, we are expecting her um, to let Nathan Wade go, but should she take the unexpected step and decide she wants to recuse her whole office, then the prosecuting attorney's counsel of Georgia will step in. But now it's it's been mostly silence, and we're just waiting to hear back. And Joyce, just your thoughts on who and uh, how could we see appeal on this? Uh, Steve Sato, the lead defense counsel for Trump in this Georgia case, just uh, recently came out with a statement saying we will use all legal options available as we continue to fight to end this case. What are those possible appeals? 
Right. So to Tamar's point, the defendants could appeal this, but they would have to get a certificate of appealability from Judge McAfee first. And I noticed something interesting in this order this morning. You know, earlier this week, Judge McAfee dismissed six counts. We've all talked about that. And in that order, he said that he would give uh, Fonnie Willis a certificate of appealability if she wanted to take an appeal immediately. Well, Judge McAfee didn't include that language in this decision on the disqualification issue. Now, he may still be willing to grant a certificate of appealability, but it's interesting that he handled the two matters differently. Uh, a certificate of appealability would have to be in place by the 25th. They've got 10 days to go ahead and get that squared away. So we'll know pretty quickly whether there will be an appeal. Katie, I've been so lucky that I've been able to not only hear you and watch you on MSNBC all morning, but also have the opportunity of chatting with you about this 23-page decision. Who do you see as the winners and the losers here? Well, the immediate losers are the defense. It was their burden to prove that there was an actual conflict of interest. And Judge McAfee dispensed with that summarily at the beginning of the ruling, saying there is no actual conflict of interest for, quote, bad choices. The winner, I would say, yes, is obviously going to be D.A. Fonnie Willis. But let's not pretend or fool ourselves to think that there really isn't going to be some consequence to this prosecution. Not only have you already spoken, Jose, about the delay that's been baked in because we've been chasing the circus sideshow, but also with the removal of Nathan Wade, whether you like it or not, materially impacts this case and the prosecution because he's been through it from ground zero. He has helped build this prosecution. He led the investigation. He put this investigation through a special purpose grand jury, took it to a grand jury and got the indictment returned on 19 co-defendants. So I've said before, there is institutional and historical knowledge that will go away with Nathan Wade. All of that being said, though, there are skilled, incredibly competent special prosecutors that remain on this case, and Anna Cross and John Floyd. They can also continue to help Fonnie Willis with this case. And, you know, I'll just just some of the details that I'm, we're going through on page 15, it says the judge finds that, quote, the record made at the evidentiary hearing established that the district attorney's prosecution is encumbered by an appearance of impropriety. What's the difference between an appearance of impropriety and impropriety? That's such an excellent question because those of us, including Joyce Vance, maintain the law, the legal standard in the state of Georgia is an actual conflict of interest. There was the there was the argument from the defense through the course of this evidentiary hearing that an appearance of impropriety is actually the legal standard. McAfee did a little bit of a hybrid decision. He said no actual conflict, but I do find that there's an appearance of impropriety. However, he gave a cure. Let's fix this, Fonnie Willis. And the way that you fix it is you either remove yourself and your entire office off this case or Nathan Wade withdraws from being a special prosecutor. You know, there's so many instances in which you hear and, and see the judge thinking about other kind of related issues. One of them, he says at one point, there is an odor of mendacity that remains. It's such a non-legal kind of term, right? Mendacity is a lie. There is in different uh, instances. Uh, this is the same judge, Katie, who was obviously in front of the, in charge of the Donald Trump plus 14. Do, do you see some change or some impact of this on the judge? We always have to talk about the practical implications of any decision in any case. And in this particular case, if you have a judge that is now telling the lead prosecutor there's a, quote, odor of mendacity, which in other words is something's rotten in the state of Denmark, right? Something stinks about what's happening here. If you have that happen, remember, Judge McAfee is the common denominator throughout the course of this case. From day one, he has been the judge assigned to this case, right? He's the judge in front of uh, that D.A. Fonnie Willis is going to have to appear in front of. And listen, as lawyers, just as witnesses, our credibility is always on the line when we try to make representations. And so I think Fonnie Willis, I, I, you know, he didn't call her out directly, directly. He said that she had bad judgment. He did say that there were some questions raised about the truthfulness of when the timing of that personal relationship was. But Fonnie Willis has to kind of take a step here and say, OK, he called me out on my witness testimony the way I, you know, I appeared on the stand. Um, I, I kind of maybe need to recalibrate a little bit right now and figure out how best to approach this prosecution.